This here is a holly tree. We often see it as a bush, but actually if you leave holly to grow on its own accord, it can grow as tall as some of our native trees and turn into quite a substantial thing. It's considered to be very bad luck to cut down a holly though, which is why many people refuse to cut them in their gardens. And actually in a lot of places, for example, where I come from, it's considered unlucky to cut them in hedges. It was thought that witches, when they moved through the countryside, would walk along the tops of hedges, and so tall hollies would be left in the middle of the hedge to stop the witches from going any further, so they're thought to repel witches. That might be because they're thought to be spiny. Um, but actually, hollies aren't spiny all the way over. What you tend to see is down near the bottom of the tree, around ground level, you find that the leaves are very spiny, and that's because that's the part of it that's going to be bitten by herbivores and going to be eaten. But then when you look a little higher up, what you find is that the leaves tend to have much fewer spikes on them because they're free from the herbivores and so they don't need to protect themselves quite so much. And that also um, gives rise to one of the useful features of holly is in that it was one of the common fodder plants throughout the Middle Ages that you used to feed your sheep and your cattle with. You often see holly growing around the edges of ancient woodlands, and that's not just as a barrier to people going in. That's also because in the winter, when there wasn't very much uh, other food available for your cattle, they used to lop the holly branches, mulch down the leaves, and then feed them to their cattle. And it's a very nutritious food, one of the best um, fodder crops you can give in the UK. And these upper leaves, without the spines on them, are obviously much more palatable to um, herbivores. It does require extra energy on the part of the tree to create these long spines. It also toughens up the edges of those leaves. It tends to distort them so the flatter leaves near the top are more efficient at gathering light, where the ones with the spines tend to be a bit wavy and so they're not quite as efficient. I think the reason that holly trees are associated with Christmas is because they're one of the few things that has dense, rich foliage in the middle of winter and also the bright red berries. In fact, before we uh, knew what the original crown of thorns was, it was often suspected that it was a, a holly bush. And this association between this green spiky foliage and the blood red berries that were supposed to look like the drops of blood from Christ's forehead meant that it was often associated with Christianity. It's often thought of as, as being a masculine tree as well. The two trees of, of Christmas, or the true, two leaves that you bring in at Christmas, are holly and the ivy. And the holly is always thought of as being the, the good, noble, masculine one, whereas the ivy is thought of as being somehow feminine and somehow a little bit more evil. <laughs> Slightly misogynistic, I know, but... <laughs>